Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. On Thursday last, Celtic Linen announced that the High Court had approved its application to have an interim examiner appointed to the company. Joining me now to discuss this decision and what the future holds for the Gina based business is Celtic Linen Director Peter Scallon. Peter, Celtic Linen has now entered examinership, but give us the reasons as to why this decision was taken. Well, firstly, Carl, examinership is uh, a process that allows a company to protect itself uh, from its creditors and uh, allows the company to thrive and recover. It's not receivership or liquidation or any of those any of those other ships as such. And if you know, if any of our staff are listening, people are getting paid. There's no job losses as part of this process. Um, the background is, it's, I suppose there's a multiple background, is that we'd built up a legacy of debt uh, during the recession and it's a bit like the way a consumer would have gone into negative equity with their house. And uh, the debt had got to such a level that we were not in a position to reinvest in the company and we do need to reinvest in new machinery and develop the production lines. Uh, part of the, the, the reason for that debt is that uh, we've quite expensive energy costs over the past six years and we're going to be talking about that in a minute uh, so I'll explain a little bit more there. Last year you embarked on a major project of restructuring within the business itself. Were parts of that unsuccessful? They, they were, Carl. Uh, restructuring in a, a, a 90-year-old business is always difficult and in a fast-moving industry with um, a lot of competitors out there uh, there's a lot of elements worked, some elements didn't work. So it's about, it's not about backing yourself into a corner and standing over uh, mistakes in the past. It's about moving forward, protecting jobs here in Wexford. Now, just in relation to the creditors, were you being put under pressure by creditors? Was that one of the reasons that you entered examinership? Um, that That's not something I think would be appropriate to go into over the airwaves. Uh, we've gone into this with the cooperation of our bank and we're working through with them at the moment. Now, Peter, what level of debt is the company currently carrying? Well, the debt is substantial, but it's it's not totally unmanageable once we have new investors in. And it really depends on how you look at that debt, whether the company is as, as a going concern or otherwise. So that's something that we will have to do, negotiate with new investors. Presume that the bank have refused to invest further into the business, and that's the reason that you're entering examinership. So who would be a typical likely investor in this case? Well, the bank haven't refused as such to invest in the business. The bank are supporting the company through what, the examination. What does that mean? Which means we can pay our bills every single day. And any bills that we're raising today, we can pay. Any staff that are working today will be paid uh, at next payday. Pensions, all of that are protected. So to answer the second part of your question, uh, it's, it's about hunting out for new investors. Uh, obviously, we don't go into this all of a sudden and we have been in negotiation for some time and that's uh, really all I could say at this stage. Do you expect that that investment will come from within the industry? Uh, that's something I'm not prepared to go into at this stage. Obviously, I don't want to prejudice any process because once examiner start, examinership starts, as it did last Thursday, uh, anybody can approach the examiner with an offer. So uh, I, I really don't know which way it's going to go. Uh, but w- thankfully there is strong interest and we wouldn't have entered this process unless we had a reasonable expectation that it will be successful. How much investment does the company need? That's a bit like, uh, Carl, if you were selling me your car and uh, I wanted to know exactly what you'd take for us. That's not something I'm going to discuss here. That's for negotiation with investors. Looking at it from a, from a business perspective, surely the company is more valuable as a going concern than it is through the examinership process because it's a distress asset that's insolvent when it's in the examinership process. So surely it would have been maybe better to consult with investors outside of examinership than within examinership. Um, often when you bring new investors in, that examinership is, when you're in discussions with investors, examinership is the route and the vehicle that's used to bring new investment into the company uh, because sometimes debts can be bring to, brought up to a level where that new investment gets just swallowed up by that. And this is what we're doing uh, with the support of our bank. A number of areas were mentioned within the independent accountants report that was submitted to the High Court for you to enter examinership. And one of those was the fact that the cost base is too high in Celtic Linen. Now, surely one of your major costs out there has to be labour. Does that mean we're going to be looking at redundancies? There won't be any redundancies as part of this process. I can't speak for the new investor. Um, Our cost base in, in Wexford 
is higher and it's, it's historically higher than our competitors. And this is what the, re, the restructuring in the past uh, 18 months has been all about, is to get our cost base down. But, you know, we've reached to a level where we've got, we've, we've got the cost base down, but the debt that we've incurred in bringing down that cost base has become unsustainable and hence the examinership process and the need for new investment. Could your competitors potentially override this process on you and you end up losing complete control of Celtic Linen along the way? The, the examiner pro- process is is it's a well established process. It's uh, where the board of directors uh, petitioned the company to go into examinership. That was approved by the court. And really, what the competitors do is largely their business. You know, I know that we will be serving our customers and continue to serve our customers. And uh, if they get predatory, we'll be fighting them off as we've always done. What happens if you don't secure fresh investment for Celtic Linen over the next one hundred days? then the examinership fails. But we wouldn't have entered this if we had expected that to happen. So what are the chances for the survival of the company, in your opinion? Well, as I said, we wouldn't have gone into the court unless I believed this would be successful. And it's not just me or my fellow directors. This is where the independent uh, expert report came in. And uh, the independent uh, expert report wouldn't have been signed off um, by BDO, and as it says on the tin, they're independent unless they believed. And then it has to go through the judge, and the judge would not have signed this off uh, on Thursday unless the judge believed that this would be successful. Now, one of the major costs in Celtic Linen, of course, is, is a power cost and electricity cost and a fuel cost in order to operate that business. Not having gas here locally must have caused you lots of pain over the last number of years. But I think everyone now in the past week knows exactly what that pain was. Uh, Carl, um, at the end of the day, we're in the business of uh, washing and ironing linen. And as you know from your own home, that requires heat or thermal energy. And our source of thermal energy uh, for for years has been uh, light fuel oil, uh, which despite its name is kind of heavy, fairly glucky, horrible stuff. uh, Black, thick, um, and it does pollute. Uh, and propane or it's be similar to what you'd uh, have in your cooker at home and fuel, fuel oil and propane are substantially more expensive than natural gas and of all of our competitors around the country burn natural gas now that was all very well up until 2008 2009 but then restructuring of the energy market came in and effectively meant for a company like us that uh, natural gas fell to a price relative to oil of around 60% the price of oil. Now, because it's such a major cost, suddenly we're out in the market for the past six years uh, by uh, having a non-sustainable energy uh, system. If I'd have known back in 2009 that it was going to take seven years to get gas, we would have moved Celtic Linen out of Wexford and all the employment out of Wexford because Wexford has not been sustainable for a large thermal energy user. Thankfully, we now have gas, and this is the opportunity for the new investor in Celtic Linen that we have an energy cost base uh, matching our competitors. And that we we fired, uh, ironically, we fired our latest boiler for the first time almost exactly the same minute that we were in the court and the examinership. And that boiler, uh, it's the latest in computerized control and oxygen sensors and carbon monoxide sensors sensors on that. And that will burn gas at efficiency around 96%, whereas with our oil boilers, we're running at 86%. So it's not just that the gas is cheaper than the oil, it's more efficient so that uh, we're, we're using less of the Earth's resources to do what we do. So speaking geographically now for a second, how much of a disadvantage has it been and does it continue to be for Celtic Linen to be located here in County Wexford? Well, um, the the gas we've discussed and we're burning our last drop of oil uh, this weekend. Um, Accessibility is a massive issue in County Wexford and there's swings and roundabouts in that uh, with County Wexford, there's a very good employment uh, employee base here and you can get very good quality people, as you know yourself, uh, to work in Wexford and housing costs are not like Dublin so that, you know, people can afford to live and work in Wexford unlike somewhere like Dublin. But a company in Dublin is obviously going to be near the, ma- the major market. And what we've seen in Ireland is more and more that the Dublin has become a magnet for the majority of the economy. And we have one of the most disproportionate economies in Europe where Dublin utterly dominates. So it, it makes it quite difficult to work outside Dublin because you're serving the Dublin market. And it's even more so in Wexford because unfortunately through failures of 
the development of the motorway network, it, that what we've seen is that Galway would have traditionally been three, three and a bit hours from Dublin, is now an hour and three quarters from Dublin. But Wexford is still two hours from Dublin uh, into the county with soil linen and they can be delayed an hour, an hour and ten minutes in New Ross. And that's that's a real competitive disadvantage. Just before we finish the interview, is there anything you'd like to say to customers of Celtic Lennon and to your employees in Celtic Lennon as well here this morning, Peter? Well, it's very simple. It's business as usual. The deliveries are happening as we speak. People are working as we speak. And next payday will be like every other payday. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.